Hi, this is Steve Wayne here with Prospect Now. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a quick audio test here. Um, I wanted to make sure everybody can hear me loud and clear. Uh, if you can uh, respond and let me know, uh, you can just type into the chat or if you hear any issues, um, let me know. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. Looks like uh, looks like everything's working here. So, hey, I want to thank everybody for attending today. This is one of my favorite webinars. I love the topic. I think it's something that um, you know anybody that's in business, even if you're not in sales, uh, we're always selling, right? <laughs> so, uh, it's one of my favorite topics to present. And Prospect Now is a company. You know, our customer is. Uh, salespeople, people that are typically selling to building owners or tenants or what have you. And so um, we've developed some outstanding uh, sales um, practices that have worked really well here. And then we also get the benefit as a company of talking to thousands of brokers uh, to find out how they're using Prospect Now, what they're doing, what they're saying. And so this is an opportunity um, to to share that with the greater audience. Um, so you know, our mission as a company uh, for our customers is really simple. It's to help you cash more commission checks. So um, I think the way we do that is we obviously provide um, a database, but also uh, you know we're we're interested in helping our customers be more effective salespeople, and that's really what. Uh, you know what today's webinar is about specifically um, how to use the phone how to use the phone um, and how to uh, how to sell in a way that um, gets you the meeting uh, and and gets you to your goal so with that I'm just gonna go ahead and begin here um, so the first thing is I, I wanna back up and take a look at selling um, in general so um, for those of you who who don't know me, I know there are many people um, on the uh, the call today that that I know personally, and uh, there's a whole other host of people that I've never met. But yeah, you know, I'm the the founder and CEO of Prospect Now. I used to be a commercial real estate broker for a number of years. Uh, I did investment sales, shopping center sales, um, and uh, during that time, you know, I've developed a uh, uh, I guess my own thoughts and and formulas for what I have seen and witnessed worked uh, worked for me as well as um, you know work for others and I, I think when I take a step back and I look at selling in general the first thing I want to convey is that uh, selling salesmanship whatever you want to call it it is a it is a catalyst for um, economic activity and it is a force for good in our economy um, and why do I say that if you look around you everything was done by deal makers you're probably looking at a computer right now. Think of all the deals that had to happen for that, you know, all the components to get sold to build that computer. Um, granted, the engineers had to build it, but somebody had to do the deal to get that computer on your desk. And ultimately, uh, if something is built, if a, if a building, for example, was built and it was never leased up, what's the point, right? So salespeople are so valuable and critical um, to our economy uh, that it, it can't even be measured. And the reason I say that is because I think all too often um, selling, it gets a bad rap. Um, and certainly there are those in, uh, in sales that maybe help to contribute to that. But for the most part, it, it's not something that we as salespeople hear very often, that our efforts are um, directly responsible for an increased standard of living. Uh, and so, granted, we need to have uh, engineers, we need to have the whole ball of wax, right, people that build stuff, but it's just, it's just a, a key component of our economy. And when you think of that, uh, I think it actually um, creates confidence, right? It creates confidence knowing that what you do is valuable. So that's the reason um, that I like to look at that. And I look at, um, I look at selling, and, and if I look at the next layer of it, um, in my observation and what I've found works for me is that the underlying um, sincerity in what it is that you sell, you've got to believe in it, 
right? So to me, if you're selling something right now, or if your if your job um, puts you in a position where you know you don't you don't necessarily believe in the product or believe in what you're selling, your credibility is on the line, right? So stop doing that and sell something that you do believe in because that makes all the difference in your success. For me personally, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to um, to do what I do if I didn't see the direct benefits uh, for my customers. And so um, I think the prerequisite is uh, selling something that you believe in and and having that uh, meaning uh, in what you do. When we hire salespeople here at Prospect Now, um, typically they start out and they get all the Prospect Now propaganda, right? We're telling them why we're better. We've got all these matrix matrices on you know competitive layouts and what we do and all this. But they're taking our word for it, right? The salesperson. What I found is when our salespeople actually see a customer tell them, "Hey, I just made a big deal because I found this building owner on Prospect Now." it makes them better salespeople. So this to me is absolutely critical. Before you can even talk about techniques and closing techniques and calling techniques, I think you need to look at the overall benefit um, of and, and meaning in what it is that you're trying to sell and what you're trying to do. And, and this relates to the next phase of this is that um, Assuming you have found a product, in, in the case of a uh, commercial real estate broker, the product is typically is a property, right? Uh, so that's an easy one to get behind. Real estate is, uh, you know, has so many different uses and so much value to our economy that that uh, goes without saying. So then the next the next phase of this is um, building the authentic. Uh, sales pitch that is the authentic version of you. I mean, I really, I really think that um, a part of this, getting back to the earlier point about um, why does the industry get a bad rap, I think there's a hesitancy to um, admit oftentimes what it is the salesperson has to gain when everybody knows what it is. So for example, I see this a lot, and actually a little bit more in residential real estate than I do in commercial, um, but you know, I've heard I've heard uh, residential agents tell me, "Well, I'm not I'm not doing it for the fee," um, and the reality is, we know that's not true, right? Not only is it not wrong to earn a commission, it is absolutely right to earn a commission. So, uh, I think it's something that um, again exudes and provides confidence when you help the prospect understand what it is you have to gain. Let me give you an example. So, we do these webinars. And we do them, why? We do them because we want our customers to be successful. But we know that if our customers are more successful, they're going to buy more product from us, right? They're going to buy more subscriptions. So that's our, you know, that's our selfish reason, if you will, for doing this. But that's not a shocker to anybody, right? It's something that we all kind of know and understand. And when you get it out on the table, it makes you a more effective salesperson because people understand where you're coming from. So I think that, you know, if I was to summarize it, I would say nothing sells like the truth. This, this directly affects how, um, how you do a cold call, which is what we're going to talk about in a little bit here. Um, I think that when uh, a customer hears uh, a sales pitch that is um, wrapped in authenticity, you know they they are more receptive to it, so it creates credibility, um, and and I think people can sense that. So, let's talk a little bit about cold calling now. Um, cold calling it's 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 the lost art form, right? Um, the first thing I would say when you're when you're cold calling, when you're reaching out to prospects, is you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a goal. So, what is the goal of a cold call? Um, everybody's product or service is a little bit different you know in the case of prospect now for example our goal when we call up a commercial real estate broker our goal is a demo that's the goal that's the close um, in commercial real estate uh, the goal is a meeting why a meeting why not just see if they want to buy or sell well I can tell you um, actually one of the first deals I did in commercial real estate I remember uh, I, I picked up the phone I called this building owner he was one of three partners and he didn't really give me a lot of reason as to why he wanted to meet with me, but I did close on the meeting. And what I found out when I met with him was he was in this big dispute with, uh, you know, the other two partners, and he wanted out of the deal. And he was only willing to share that with me after I had developed some credibility with him. Um, and so, 
what I have found, and I believe this to be um, a consistent reality, is that people are not going to open up to you about their most precious asset, in this case, commercial real estate, um, on a phone call. It's just not going to happen. So your objective is to get that meeting. You know, another way to look at it is if I, just, if I decided that I wanted to go to Lake Tahoe for the weekend, but I just got in my car and I started driving aimlessly, right? I'm not going to get there. So the, so knowing what my goal is, in this case, to get to Lake Tahoe, and then having a plan to get there, is gonna, I'm going to get there. And the same thing goes with the call. So the first thing you should do before every call that you make is remind yourself what the goal is. This is huge. There's a lot of people on the call that I'm sure are seasoned salespeople, and for them, this is a reminder of what they already know. And then if you're new in the business, this is invaluable, right? Because if you're, if you're doing all the effort to make these phone calls and you're not closing on the meeting, you're doing yourself a disservice. Okay, so what is the, uh, what's the anatomy of a great call? Well, I think that, um, I think calling a prospect, it's, it's a lot like a, a tennis match, right? There's a back and forth there. So the first, the first 30 seconds is that intro part. That's the hardest, right? Because uh, you want to get and establish um, a back and forth. And the reality is the person doesn't want to talk to you, right? I mean, they, they see it as an invasion of their time. You're really asking them for something when you really haven't earned it yet. You're asking for their time. So you got to break through that preoccupation barrier. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with your tonality, which relates to the earlier part of this presentation, which is sincerity and a, just a genuine desire to help. I think. I think a good way to look at this is when you make a cold call, your goal is to, in addition to getting the meeting, but your goal is to really help the person you're calling with your services, right? Um, so the first thing is uh, ask a question to create this back and forth. So a lot of times it's like this, hey, this is Steve Wayne calling from Prospect Now. How are you doing? And that's such a simple question, asking how they're doing. Um, but a lot of people, if you wait and you use silence as, as a tool, um, a lot of people are actually kind of in, initially they're surprised. They're like, whoa, whoa, this guy actually wants an answer on how, how I'm doing. Um, but it creates and establishes a back and forth. Um, a lot of times they'll kind of, they'll, they might respond with, eh, you know, what's this about? But the point is that silence is as important, if not more, in that introduction than, um, than what you're saying. So, uh, you know, you can, you can ask a question, whatever it is that you're comfortable with. It's got to be your own pitch. But at the end of the day, um, establishing that back and forth really establishes the tone for the whole call. Um, so let's get a, a, a really specific example. I'm actually going to show you prospect now in, in the context of an example here. So let's say that I wanted to find all property owners. Let's say I've got a listing. Okay, I listed a, a property for sale you know, um, in the 95125 zip code in San Jose, California, and I want to call, or maybe I got a listing um, on Lincoln Avenue uh, in San Jose, and I want to call every other building owner of a similar property on that street, okay? So how, how would I do this, and what would I say? So let's go through this. I'm going to pop out of here, okay? Um, this is Prospect Now, for those of you that um, are not customers or haven't seen it. This is the interface, right? So what I want to do is I want to go in here and I'm going to find every um, every property owner on a street. So this is uh, Lincoln Avenue. Okay, this is the street. Um, I've already got this pre-populated here just to to save time. Um, here's the zip code and then here's my building range. Okay. Now if I'm if I'm really filtering, I can do a lot of things here. Incidentally, I could go in here and say, all right, show me every property owner that owns more than one property. Um, why do we have that in there? Well, if I can make one call to somebody that owns 10 properties, it's the same as making 10 calls. One thing I am a huge proponent of is efficiency. So um, cold calling is in itself a, an inefficient activity because the, the odds of success are so low. Uh, when you're doing, you know, you make 10 calls, you might get two people on the phone, and may, if you're lucky, one person is interested, right? Uh, but it doesn't matter because all it takes is one. Um, 
But what we want to do is we want to get to the people that are most likely to want to do business with you. So if you're doing, for example, investment sales, you want to find somebody that's more likely to want to sell. Maybe they've got more property. Maybe they're an out-of-state owner um, and they're tired of maintaining their property. Um, maybe you're trying to find buyers and you want to find guys that just sold their property uh, and they're potentially in an exchange. You can do all those things on Prospect Now. So the goal is to um, get to the low-hanging fruit, right? Um, actually, what we want to do is make fewer calls, but make those calls count. Um, so anyway, in this example, I've got you know five to 10,000 square feet. I'm going to do my search here. OK. And these are all the, uh, these are all the properties on this street, uh, Lincoln Avenue. So now I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to make a call, right? So here's a property. Let's just take a look at this. So OK, here it is. Looks like it's an office building. Um, and if I click on the, the owner tab here, what do I want to do? Well, it really is important to be able to ask for the person that's the decision maker, right? And this is one of the key things of uh, Prospect Now, what it does so well is we can tell you all the information on the property, uh, but if we go to the next tab, you know, the owner tab is really where the magic happens because we want to contact the owner um, and we want to know who to ask for. So. If you look at this, um, you've got buyer properties. That's the owner on title. Um, but then we've got additional data here. For example, the partner is Alan G. Buyer. Okay, that's the managing partner. There's also a Barbara Burling associated with this um, company. So we've got two contacts here. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, this is just more information on the company, buyer properties. So who are they? Um, you know, who are the people there? There's, there's these orange buttons here, contact owner contact people. So if they have multiple employees um, at the company, you can get all this information on them. So um, here's, uh, here's the employee. We have six employees where we have uh, at the company and we've got information on their title. So now we know who to ask for. So I think Alan is the guy. If we wanted to, we could um, do a little research on him on, uh, on LinkedIn and as much information as we can before we make that call. Information's critical, but only actionable information. We don't want to overload ourselves. Sometimes it's analysis paralysis, right? People get so much data that they actually that it slows them down. If you take nothing else away from this screen right here, you can literally just go down this list and go contact owner, contact owner, contact owner, contact owner, and call these guys. This is something that I would have killed for when I was um, uh, in commercial real estate because you know I had to do all this stuff manually. Um, so here, the phone number, uh, the email, all that's you know right at your fingertips. So let's say now I've decided Alan's the guy that I want to talk to. Okay, so what am I going to say to Alan? So this is where we're going to get real specific here. So uh, let's just go back to this. Um, this is what I would typically say, you know, when I was uh, doing commercial real estate. Hey, this is Steve Wayne calling from you know name your name the company you work for. Ajax Commercial Real Estate is Alan in. Oh, this is Alan. Hey, Alan, I was calling about your property on Lincoln Avenue. I wanted to reach out and see if you had any plans to sell or invest in anything else. Um, now, my take on this is this is a very direct approach. Everybody's got a different, you know, opinion on what that intro, um, you know, what that intro should say. I like the direct approach because that's really why I'm calling. You know, I, I have experimented with other types of calls like, hey, did you know that this property down the street just sold? And at the end of the day, they're kind of going, why are you calling me? So I prefer the uh, the direct approach. And now let's just assume that Alan tells me to pound sand here, right? So he says, no, um, this is this is your opportunity, right? This is the genius of, of rejection. I think rejection is like, it's like building a muscle, right? The more The more you deal with it, the more you deal with it in a patient way, um, and uh, and get good at it, the stronger you become. And I actually think there's a little aspect of personal growth in here that is um, that's really great. If you look at it as an opportunity, right, and not as a negative, um, it's really easy to be nice to people that are nice to you. I mean, that doesn't take a lot of character, right? Um, and it's also pretty easy to be rude to people that are rude to you. Um, but I think that the the growth is in being professional um, to to people that are rude to you, and and at the end of the day, it's not that you know in my example here that this person is being rude. It's just that they see it as an interruption, right? 
So here in lies the opportunity for uh, for personal growth. So this is uh, this is what uh, we used to call the truth close, and and I really like this one because I think it's I think it's direct, and it got me so many meetings. Um, I closed a lot of deals using the using the truth close, right? And and this is what I would say. Um, Let's let's assume that that Alan said, "Look, Steve, I'm never selling that property. Don't even call me about it. Uh, it's not going to happen." Um, so my response would be, "Remember my objective, right? It's a meeting." So uh, the response would be, uh, "No problem, Alan. You know, I'm a really active broker in San Jose, and I hear you loud and clear that you're not selling. Um, but you know, someday you might want to do something, be it an exchange, refinance, find a tenant, whatever it is, and." And when that day comes, uh, you're probably going to want to do business with someone you know and trust. And uh, you know, I just want the opportunity to, to come down and, and meet you. Um, I'm really active, and uh, and maybe one day I can help you. Is that is that sound okay? How about I come down at you know five o'clock on Thursday? And so so there it is, right? And it's all it's a true statement, right? Because if he really is active in the business. Um, and you're a good broker and you're active in the business, it does make logical sense for the two of you to meet, right? Um, so I've had a lot of people say yes to that, a lot of people. And the other thing sometimes I'll put on there is, hey, I'll just come by, drop off a business card, you know, shake your hand. Um, and then it ends up, <laughs> I remember one time I went on this meeting and I uh, ended up going to this guy's house and he and he took me through his basement with all of these uh, he went on this safari and showed me all these African relics, and I, I spent like four hours at this guy's house um, learning all about his business, all about what he does, and developed a relationship there. So you never know what's going to happen, um, and uh, and I just again I'm a big believer in getting the meeting. So that's the actual close, right? Do you have ten minutes? I'll come by and drop off a uh, you know business card. So what are the barriers to to doing what we know we should do. I mean, I've noticed this. I think it's common am amongst everybody. At the end of the day, if a day goes by and I did everything that I know I should do, I don't. I don't feel bad about that. I feel good about. I feel good about that day. The days where I should have done X, Y, and Z, and I and I didn't do X, is the day that I go. You know what? I I didn't. I didn't uh, do everything I could do that day. So, um, I think that making sure that we can't control necessarily the results, but what we can control is what we do. And I've found the human brain will find any reason uh, to, uh, to do something else other than <laughs> necessarily what it should be doing. You know, checking the internet, messing around on Facebook, whatever. Um, it's, uh, it's something that happens. So. Um, the first thing is, the first excuse is I don't have time, right? Oh, I don't have time to make calls. We're not talking about a lot of calls here. If you're not making many now, you know, even 10 a day is a huge uh, improvement. And over time, this will make a big difference in your business. So I'd say make an appointment with yourself. Put it on your calendar. Block out the time. Um, the second thing is, okay, well, I don't know what to say, right? So we're recording this webinar. Hopefully this, this specific, uh, you know, uh, cold call script will be useful for you. Um, and then the last piece is, well, wh where do I get the list? Well, that's what Prospect Now does, right? So really, we've got all the tools. And incidentally, it doesn't just have to be cold calling, right? It's, it's marketing in general. Telemarketing is one form of marketing. But Prospect Now also has mailing addresses for snail mail. You'd be shocked at how well snail mail works now these days because everybody's using email. We also have email, too. Um, you know, so sometimes the low-tech solutions, they still work. Um, so really, you've got an answer on every one of these um, these barriers. And with regard to getting the list, I mean, I can really relate to that one because it's a lot of work. I mean, what I used to do is go in and, all right, I got to search for a property address, got to get an LLC, uh, then I search the LLC, try and get a person, then I search the person, get, get a phone number, you know, call it, verify it, put it in a spreadsheet and load it into a CRM tool. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if we only had to do it a few times, but you know, when you really need to build a database of about 1,200 records, you're talking about a lot of effort here that we want to eliminate uh, for you. So what is, a, what is a possible ROI scenario 
look like here. So I, I like to look at I like to look at ROI, return on investment, but also return on time too. So if you're doing building a database manually, um, man, it's just a lot of work, right? Uh, and so you know when I was first building my database, there's really two phases of a database. One is maintenance, and then the other one is the the creation of it. So um, in the early phases, if you're building one, you know, you're spending hours and hours every day, right? Um, and if you could eliminate that, bring that down from, you know, four hours to, to one, um, you're talking about a lot of time that you can get back, which you can use to dedicate to cold calling. So if you were able to make, you know, another 25 calls, um, you know, uh, per hour as a result of that, uh, and you got three hours freed up, and maybe even do this for an assistant, right? Maybe you've got a, an assistant working with you that you can free them up uh, to to make these calls as well. You know, you, you could potentially make 75 extra calls. Uh, and you know, what does that mean? Well, in my in my experience, and from what we've measured, it takes about 100 calls to get a meeting, right? So, you know, then you could go on four extra meetings uh, per week. And how many meetings does it take to get a listing? You know, I think conservatively 20, it might be less, um, but I think conservatively 20. So that means that, you know, in a 12-month period, you could conceivably get 10 additional listings. Um, and then you can follow the rest of the logic, right? If it, if it equates to um, one or two deals, right, a year, you're talking about real money here. In this case, I just did an average deal size of 700 grants, $42,000. So there's real money to be made here. And right now... Um, you know, this real estate market, is, as many of you on the call know, is, is starting to turn the corner here. So there's, there's a lot more interest. There's a lot more money chasing deals. Banks are starting to make loans. So time is of the essence here. So um, this is, uh, I guess this is the, uh, the shameless uh, sales pitch, pitch section of this webinar. If you're not a customer, um, you know, I, I strongly encourage you to to, uh, to get on there and become a customer because this uh, this could could make you uh, potentially a lot of money if you use it right. So this is the pricing on Prospect now. Um, you can get in for as little as eighty nine dollars a month, um, and uh, that gets you one county of data. If you want to pay for the year, it's nine hundred and sixty one dollars. You get ten percent. That's a ten percent discount, and you get four counties instead of one. So um, then you're off and running. You're off and running. You're making calls, and uh, you're making it happen. So um, you know, I want to thank everybody for for uh, coming on today. I I hope this was valuable for you. And we're going to do more of these. Uh, we're doing webinars, you know, every week. Uh, this one is one in particular that I I just really enjoy. So um, I like doing this one, and I hope that you can take something from this and apply it in your business uh, today. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and conclude. And thanks again, everybody.